We are gonna leave Dornanay again. This is our attempt number two. Take two. And I'd like to shout out to Phil on Sonder. Uh, he gave me a pro. Off, by the way. He gave me a pro tip on sailing off the anchor, trying to like get the tack that you want. He said just heave the boat too, so pull the headsail out. It just keeps the boat on that tack, and that's essentially what we've did. Now I got to just let it go. And we're underway. Thanks, Phil, for the pro tip. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh. I know. I'm gonna go back. Okay, I'm gonna go sail the boat. Wow. something super peaceful about sailing off the anchor. It's just so quiet and it's, you don't have this, I don't know, this fuss of the motor. I mean, granted the motor is nice when you're in a sticky spot, but the more we learn to sail off the anchor, the more comfortable we get in tighter spots and maneuvering the boat, so. It doesn't look like we'll be fighting nearly the headwind that we fought before or the swell. Both have subsided quite a bit, though we will have a headwind. It's only like 15 knots or something, so. Darren's working on uh, tightening our shrouds in the last sail. They're really loose. Eh, we're gonna fix it while we're on the right tack. It's a lot easier. So it's one turn more each side while we're sailing. So hopefully it should be better when we get more loaded up. But we only have like 12 knots of apparent wind, so the rig's not loaded really. So it's not like before we had 25. So. We're gonna do something we haven't done before and that's change the headsail while under passage. We have two headsails. We have like 120 or 130% Genoa. And then we have our big Jenny. She's like 190 or almost 200%. And the winds are just super light. We only have, I think like 10 knots of breeze. So we're gonna need big Jenny, I think, to, to get us out of here. So we did it, got it. We got our big Jenny out. Successful launch. Um, like I think the hardest part is just folding up the old sail. Like yeah, it's just in a big blob right now. <laughs> it's as best as we could fold it. I don't know how you do that professionally on deck. Like how you get it just right. And our performance really didn't change. Change. <laughs> so there's that takeaway as well. Uh, the wind shifted in our favor, we're able to like turn um, and maybe make it past this point. But the long game is we're gonna be going downwind after we turn this corner and Big Jenny will be perfect because we'll still have like about 15 knots um, behind us and that will be great. We were excited and nervous to finally make it to the pass, but all we could see ahead were tumultuous seas. Well, we are in the raw de sea, and it is lumpy. <laughs> Super lumpy seas. Um, and we're just trying to kind of plot our way through here. Wow, the sea is just super confused and lumpy. This is uh, just classic. You know, two, three knot current right against some light wind. Uh, luckily, it's not super steep or big, but really hard to, to drive the boat through. Panda's working really hard at the helm. Cool. 
going farther than we wanted to. So let's just get across this yeah, rough that's patch. Yeah, that's I'm telling you. Okay. We have conquered the pass. Ra de scene. We have conquered you. Which it feels so good. It took so many jibes just to get through it with adverse current and wind. And uh, so Panda is pooped. That's you, Gary. That's you, Gary. How these are really slippery. And whenever. <laughs> Bye -bye. Challenging but really good sail. Uh, enjoying this last bit that we can just relax a little bit. It was uh, really intense for a while during the raw to scene, and now I'm gonna relax and we're just gonna pop into a uh, little bay for the night before we keep heading south. The majority of our sailing miles so far have been longer passages, going offshore and covering big distances. But now that we are coastal sailing, we're enjoying shorter hops, ones that we can sail hard, anchor in daylight hours, then enjoy a beer and cook a good hot meal, which usually ends with a good night's rest before the next day's adventure. Good morning. We are setting off. Let's keep moving south. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day, huh? So that's our cue Really satisfying. Just let it go. Darren, we're turning. I don't think we're going to miss it. They're big ass. Sailed off the <laughs> We sailed off the mooring. I think we've done that actually before, but still always a good exercise. Good. Yeah, good job. Woo! Welcome back, Starfire. Choo choo! And the train is coming. Oh, the motion of the boat got so much better under Spinnaker. <laughs> it was so rolly under our Jenny. Oh, this is great. For those who don't have a Spinnaker, get one. A cruising Spinnaker is amazing on a cruising boat. Like, I know it's some work to set up, but it's smoother, faster, the motion is so comfortable, and it's just fun to sail. The more practice you do with the spinnaker, it gets easier every time you learn and it's much more enjoyable to fly. So get out there and fly your spinnaker. A little difficult on a pitching foredeck, huh? Like, because oh, we have this yeah. big swell right now, so it's uncomfortable and I think you hurt your knee this time, was it? Yeah. I think every time you go forward, you hurt something. Yeah, yeah it was really, like, I felt nauseous how bad it hurts. Like, I just need to hug the spinnaker. <laughs> you just hug the bag, you're like, oh. The bag was comforting, and now, yeah, it doesn't hurt after after that. I just need to get over the initial pain. It's like when you hit your funny bone, it was exactly like the feeling. You're so right about the practice, like, the more we do it. I mean, we did that in, like, less than 10 minutes. And we even switched roles this time. Like, I did the cockpit stuff, you yeah. did the foredeck stuff. So yeah, we're both getting proficient. I start to lose like, oh, I get comfortable in the cockpit doing all that work, but you need to go forward and just face your fear and just get it done. Yeah. I felt a little more confident in the setup this time. We changed it up recently, so it's uh, still learning it, but definitely now it's becoming secondhand. 
That was a hell of a spinnaker day. Now we're just navigating the river entrance. Well, we got uh, Big Penny out, just rolled up to like a third reef. So that way she's more manageable. Yeah, there's just a narrow entrance and a, sh and a shoal in the middle. So it's like you can choose your own adventure. Zoom out. Gonna sail up this river like a couple of miles and um, yeah, find a little anchorage. So there's some weather coming in tonight, so it'll be nice to be up this river in a nice protected area. Departing the ocean proper and sailing inland invokes an exciting sort of feeling that your sailboat is really the greatest exploration vehicle. One minute we're battling big tidal races, and the next, park in a beautiful river which leads to the old French town of Campar. River to come up. This is absolutely gorgeous. They're like pandas in a perfect spot, and we can explore with, with touches. Yeah. This river goes on pretty far, uh, but it started raining, so we decided to stop under this tree and take a little break and enjoy the scenery. All right, good to go. Coming up this river was a really cool trip. It almost feels like a little canal trip, especially right here in the river in the uh, like city center. Um, we found this public slipway, but excited to go explore. Let's go see what the city's like. tide lower than when we came in and we keep actually running aground <laughs> and we had to get the oars out but at least it's peaceful and the river is having is running out so it's pushing us along pretty nicely like we don't even have to do anything Way. Love it, yes. I have to pee, and this is the tack to pee on. <laughs> <laughs> Easy access. Yeah. You need to lock me. <laughs> I need to lock my panda. Oh. <laughs> uh, we're a little cooped up, I think. 